Hi there, hello! Today I'm going to show you how we went from this to this with a little bit of this. Okay, so let me show you how it's done. So as you can see in here, we have my character in Inkscape. I move here to the side, I divide it into different parts. So we have head, body, hips, and the hands and legs are divided into three different parts for each of the big bones in here, and the hand itself, and the foot itself. So nothing overly complex. All right, when we hop into Godot, I created the character all over again in here. So I created sprite for each of the body parts, and I'm using the sprite region in here to use the sprite divided into three different regions in here. So I can use just one asset to create the whole sprite in here just by using different region of it. And it automatically cuts it into regions for me using auto slice and it actually works quite well. So no issues here. And you would think that with that I will be able to create a character super quick. But unfortunately things are happening in my life and I had to do a couple of jobs. Okay, we had some issues with the shower in the house. There was plenty of mold on the ceiling, as you can see that left me with this mess. So my plan today is hopefully to get rid of that, fix it before my partner comes home. Okay. Okay, a couple of paintbrushes. A tray. Hopefully that will be a success. I tried to go into the shop and actually get the paint because I ran out. So, wish me luck, it started raining proper puring it down. I'm going to try to run in the house, not kill myself on the way. Okay, nobody here. Let's go. All right, so here I'm back. And um, what do you do next? I created bonds for my characters and I created uh, IK chains in here. So I had to add this foot end nodes to create the bond from hands and from feet to be able to drag to the end. If I didn't create the foot end, this bond wouldn't be created and I wouldn't be able to move the foot. So what happens now, I can drag the bond. And as you can see, I can drag the mouse all, all the way here, but it will block me. So I can't move it further than the leg would itself allow you to do. I can also move the foot, it will bend nicely for me and that way I can will be able to create the steps for characters, I can even do the punch, if the character wants to punch, I can do that. I don't think we will be punching in this game, but it is all possible here. The same on the shoulders, if I move the shoulders, the whole body swings about. I can also rotate the blocks if I hold control just by themselves, so if I want to have more precision I can just rotate one hand. All right, and again, you would think that that will be so quick that we can start creating animations. But things that always come up, we have to go to the park with the kids. Afterwards. No, he's quite heavy, isn't he? Yeah. Alright, so what, what else did I do with the game? I have now my character selected, I select the animation player. You can see I have different animations in here. So I have a setup animation just to set up all the ones. My character can now run. If I press play, you can see it runs quite nicely. And it's not too overly complicated. The only ones you have to remember is the one when you land on the leg. And the one when you have legs crossed in here. And the other one with the legs crossed in here. As long as you get those poses right, you can then readjust everything else. And be done quite nicely in here. Oh, you can see Tito is playing the game. Nice. I have character able to jump. Jump is very simple, just one frame animation. I want it to be snappy. When you press space, I want character to jump straight away. And that's what it does. Change it straight away to that. Let me show you. So it runs, I press space, it just jumps straight away. Also have a character fall. So when it fall, it just rotates the arm and the legs slightly and then points down and stays that way. 
And finally, I add the climb animation and let me show you how it works. Character will grab the wall in here on the top and then push it all the way up and goes into jumping position soon. So let me show you how it's done in the game again. So if I get to the ledge in here and I miss it slightly, we'll grab all the ledge, push ourselves and jump. This allows me to make sure that the player, if he misses the jump slightly, doesn't feel disappointed and he can still rescue himself as long as his head is above the ledge, he can climb. The way I'm doing the climbing and deciding if you can climb or not, let me show you. So if I jump with a wall like this, I can't climb it at all. There is nothing to grab on. To make sure I can grab something, I need to make sure the space above the grass is empty. So the way I do that with the player, I use the wall ledge detector in here. So I have three different rays coming, raycast to the nodes. Two of them go in here to detect that there is a wall on front of my face, just exactly in front of my face. I don't want him to be trying to grab anything if it's on his feet. I want to make sure that his head is near the wall. And this one diagonal makes sure that there is air above the, the wall. So I have to make sure there is no two blocks stuck on top of each other, but there is actually a place to climb to. Trying to mess about with like fun, fancy animation for this climbing, but in the end I decided that this one is probably the best one I can do. It's not overly complicated, won't be used very often, so there was no point of messing with it. Basically hands are raising up, legs and hands are going against the wall that he's holding to. And then he pushes quickly down, goes into jumping pose that he changes to that. Overall it works well and I'm really happy with it. And I also have this idle animation, when the player is waiting to start the game, it does like this little wiggle to simulate the breathing, I think it works okay. Okay, so you might be thinking to yourself, it's been nearly two months since you posted last devlog, and that is all you have done, that's not really much. And I would be right, you are right, it wasn't much. I didn't have much time to work on the game, unfortunately game is not my priority in life, I have other things to do. At the moment I'm focusing on my level 5 assistant practitioner and hopefully my nursing degree in the future. But I'm slowly working on the game in the background, so it's still happening, I'm not abandoning the project at any time soon. But it's going slower than I expected and that's fine because I decided I will post about the progress of the game as it is and not just about, you know, all the success stories you hear in here. And there is a bug in here, apparently. For some reason player does go into a replace animation. So let's fix that now, straight away. That would be a simple fix. Here you go, working on the fly. Okay, so that fixes it, I think so. Here I added a signal from the animation player. When the full animation finishes playing, we can all replay it again. So it's not updated all the time. So now when character falls, does the full animation once and keeps falling forever. So in here in handle animations, can play full animation if it's false. Then we can play it again. And it works. Okay, great. Okay, it's time to take kids to bed. And hopefully I will see you next week with some more progress. Take care, guys.